Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 42 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Oh yeah, 42. Alright, we gotta get uh, some stuff going on today. I have been running around some Mistcraft ages, as you can see I'm kind of doing it right now. Uh, my approach has been to, uh, you know, I, I'm still running around in age 3 at the moment, the, the one that I spawned a couple episodes back. And I've just been running in random directions, sometimes uh, southeast, sometimes southwest. Uh, you know, I kind of went like north, southeast east and west and now I'm going southwest and southeast just trying to run in random directions and create a bunch of world generation uh, which is going to be used uh, to pretty much find some of the libraries and also I've been jumping into any Thalmcraft dungeons I have because I found that um, pages also spawn in uh, chests so if you uh, you know any any dungeon chests so if you find yourself a, uh, a Thalmcraft dungeon it's you know I wouldn't say like guaranteed but I would say about 50% of the time you'll find at least one or two pages uh, in the Thalmcraft dungeon so that's a good approach to take. Uh, of course this is generating a lot of terrain which is generating a lot of uh, large file sizes but that's not that big a deal. Uh, my actual plan here is when I upload uh, episode 50's world I'll just not upload uh, Dimension 3 and 4's file or th 1 and 3 I guess. Uh, that'll save on the download size for all you guys who are downloading the map uh, because there's really nothing of importance in these dimensions at this point. Like you know you could always travel to them and it would generate a new Dimension 1 and 3 uh, but at this point there's really nothing of use there so it's no sense in uh you know uploading it for you guys and of course i'm bringing lots of food with me because i keep starving to death because you know hunger is one of the side effects of this dimension uh so overall not the worst dimension and i'm surprised i usually have a little bit more luck uh finding stuff at this point i haven't found one since i started recording which is awesome but i do have a bunch of stuff in my inventory which i'll show you in just a moment gonna hop back to the overworld here there we go Hooray! Uh, I've been uh, doing a lot of cool stuff. I've been uh, collecting a lot of these knowledge fragments, which I've also been finding in Thalmcraft dungeons. Like I said, we're going to use those pretty soon. And, uh, you know, I've just been kind of going through, so I'm pretty sure I already have meadow biome. I do. So if I have the page already, I've been kind of throwing it in this chest. I'm probably just going to wind up destroying that stuff somewhere. Uh, glacier biome, I already have that one as well. I've gotten to the point where I'm starting to get a lot of duplicates. Mountain ridge biome, yep. And, uh, of course, I am getting a couple nice new pages so let's see caves i think i've been storing that in world mods caves yeah i've already got that cool and the rising symbol i want to say that's a modifier so uh let's see setting i have here noon magenta all right so i'm gonna throw rising in there there we go and now we've got rising it's one of the um sun modifiers you can modify the sun symbol with rising and it'll basically always be dawn Pretty cool. Uh, most of the other things I've got already though, like tiny biomes. So you can see I've got a lot of biome modifiers here, which is good. I'll probably be creating some cool worlds using this stuff. Mushroom Island, I already have that one. So like I said, lots of duplicates. There's a couple types of uh, pages that I really are kind of my favorite and are awesome, and I haven't gotten yet, which is sad. Uh, like Void World, I haven't gotten, and Lava, I haven't gotten. But you know, we'll get there. Yellow, I don't think I have that one set up yet. Cool. All right, so I'm going to uh, sort out all this junk that I have in my chest here, and then I'm going to, um, oh good, I got stone, that's nice. And then, um, you know, come back in a few when I'm ready to start working on uh, today's episode. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the bees. I actually made a quick little um, item last episode, uh, in between last episode and this one, that I didn't make on camera, but I wanted to show you guys because I wanted you to know about it. Now, as you know, the industrious drone line uh, is only tolerant to normal climate and normal humidity. And you can see its extra tolerances are set to zero, right? So normal none. What that means is that this bee likes it to just be a normal temperature and normal humidity, like you can see right here. Um, if it's not like that, that, then the bee is going to complain and he's not going to work. Uh, he's just going to sit there and complain and say, I don't like this weather. Get me out of here. All right. Uh, you can see over here, I actually put industrious bees in this apiary because I figured uh, I believe they have a little bit better effect on uh, doing the, the tree breeding thing. And I'm really trying to get a couple more uh, walnut saplings going on. So uh, once I've got those, I'll be able to build walnuts, but I'm just not there yet. Uh, when I put them in here, however, it's a uh, normal damp 
humidity area. So it's a little damp because we happen to be in a swamplands biome. So this biome is swamplands, where over here, uh, we're in a pine forest, okay? So those different biomes are causing the different humidity and temperature levels. However, you can see my industrious queen is running diligently. Why is that? Well, I've got this industrious worker here that currently has uh, the trait of humidity tolerance plus one. Uh, so you can see here that this guy has a little bit more tolerance to the humidity of the environment. It actually is allowed to be one level higher than normal, which is damp. Um, and uh, that's why the bee is allowed to operate in this environment. So that temperature and humidity tolerance trait is very important. It basically means like, hey, we're allowed to, you know, we, we like it to be normal, but we're not going to complain too much if it's a little bit more damp uh, than just uh, the normal one. So there's normal up one, and this is normal none. Okay, now he wouldn't like it to be any drier, but you could have both one, which would be, uh, you know, a little bit damper or a little bit drier. So that's uh, an option, but uh, there's different traits that are available to you with your bees, and that's just what this is all about. Uh, now, now, how did I get this trait on here? Well, I used one of the very first extra bee machines. Um, I actually realized the problem right after I wrapped up last episode, so uh, I just did this real quick so that this bee could operate in between episodes. So I've got the acclimatizer here. It requires some lava and some water cans, a couple pieces of redstone, and the apiarist machine, which you guys have seen me craft before. All right, so that's the tier one apiarist machine. Uh, we've got some cool stuff that goes on right now. Uh, all you gotta do in your acclimatizer is throw some water into the slot if you want to increase the humidity. Uh, and there's other items you can throw in to decrease the humidity and to increase and decrease the temperature time tolerances. Uh, I'll go into some of those. Um, the machine works all right. It's not the best machine. It's a tier one machine. Really what you're going to want to do is have a tier uh, two or three machine here uh, on these lines that can manipulate these trades even better. And that's some of the stuff we're going to start taking a look at today. You can see that uh, I made a water capsule. If we take a look up in any eye here, how to make one of those guys, it's really simple. Uh, all you got to do is create yourself a wax capsule, which is three pieces of wax mm. yields four wax capsules. Cool. And, uh, um, what that allows you to do is suck up water, just like with the cans or the other stuff. Uh, you can see that you can also, uh, you know, fill it up in a liquid transposer. Uh, you can also sometimes get it uh, using a squeezer and some other stuff. So neat, cool stuff. Um, so that's the way I got uh, these uh, water capsules. You can also just walk up to a water source and right click. So I figured let's, you know, make it easy, craft 64 of these guys, and then, uh, you know, along our way we went. So we acclimatized the industrious drone, made the 64 water capsules to fill it up. I actually made a couple extra by mistake, so I just threw them in there. Uh, I think I've got the few other ones somewhere else around here. Uh, meanwhile, I've got the pollen and the royal jelly coming in really well. Uh, lots of honey, lots of wax, bunch of other stuff showing up uh, from all my bees that are running. Now it's probably nighttime, which is why they are not running at the moment, but we can go sleep through the night and uh, deal with that. So that's where I'm at with my bees. Now I want to start taking a look at some of the extra bees machines and do, uh, you know, some other cool stuff with it. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so on the screen down here are all the extra bees blocks, and these are the blocks that allow you to do all kinds of cool manipulation of your bees' genes and traits. Uh, the Tier 1 machines are the ones that look like they have a bronzish color in the corner, and they are all made using the apiarist machine. So you can see that there's actually three of them. Um, you can get um, the genetic machine, which is the Tier 2 guy I'll go into in a minute, the acclimatizer, which I've just showed you, the apiarist data bank, which is a block form of the apiarist database, and then finally the indexer, which we've also seen and we've got one of already. Now for the genetic machine you have to take the Apiris machine and upgrade it using a basic circuit board and some iron. And this is the tier 2 machine uh, which can eventually be upgraded to a tier 3 machine, the advanced genetic machine. Uh, and this is the one that allows you to craft the gene pool and the sequencer and the splicer. Now the sequencer and splicer are blocks that are all right, but there's better versions of them, so I usually skip them. Uh, but the gene pool is a very important one. We're definitely going to want to get that guy because he's going to be really important to us. So why don't I go ahead and, uh, you know, show you guys how this works. All right, guys, we're over to the carpenter where we're about to make ourselves something fancy. Uh, just need to get one of those basic circuit boards this guy here you can see it crafting up already awesome and uh once that's done i'm going to take it out with me and uh the extra redstone that i got hopefully i got everything i need let's see i've got some bronze to make a sturdy casing some copper 
and some redstone gets me that apiaris machine, the first tier of it. And then I need a lapis and some iron to get the second tier of genetic machine. And then I'm going to probably need a good amount of glass. So let's get like a good stack of that. Uh, I think I'm going to need four tanks. Is that right for the gene pool? Yes. Okay. And then it's uh, the four tanks, some of this and that. And one of these cool gene pool ready to roll. Uh, I want to grab just a few other things while I'm at this. Let's see. Probably going to want some uh, liquid ducts and some redstone energy conduits. That'll do for now. All right, off we go to the bee room. Now, the gene pool is one of the very first and most important machines that you should get when you're messing around with extra bees. Um, let's see. How are we doing here for stuff? Hmm. Not bad. Just trying to debate exactly where I want to store something. But why don't I show you how it works first, and then we'll talk about storage of it. So I'm just going to put down the gene pool, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how this little tool works, okay? Just got to give it some power. And when we open up the interface, you'll see that uh, there's currently no B in there. That's the error message we're getting. And it fully charged up real quick. It only uses about five Minecraft joules per tick, which really ain't too bad. Uh, there's six input slots, plus the current slot that it's processing, and then over here it's got a tank. What does the gene pool do? All right, not a big thing, um, except that when you middle click with that open, it messes up your inventory. That's okay. Gene pool will break down your bees. So let's take some bees. I've got this uh, noble worker here. I don't really need him. And I've got this noble drone right here. Now notice that there's a difference between these. And what is that difference? One of them is analyzed and one of them is not. That is actually going to make a difference. So if we throw an unanalyzed noble bee inside the gene pool, basically any drone has the same um, you know, amount of stuff that you're going to get from any other drone. But princesses give you a lot more, but of course they're a lot more rare. You get liquid DNA. You get about 2.5%, I want to say, uh, from a non-analyzed drone. But if you analyze your drones first, you're going to get even more. Uh, we're going to get about double that. So that should give us like 7%. I want to say like it'll give us five more and it'll bump us up to seven so you get two and a half percent from a non-analyzed bee and you get five percent full uh, from a fully analyzed bee now liquid DNA is a very important liquid it's what allows us to do all the advanced genetic manipulation basically you have to break down your extra bees all the stuff you don't need to deal with like all these bees right here most of them are completely worthless. I don't need to deal with any of them. Um, you know, we've already got some automation going on. We've got plenty of forest drones. We've got plenty of tropical drones, all this stuff. We don't really need them that much. Um, once you've really automated your bee stuff, there's just tons of extra drones that get produced because you get two or three drones uh you know per cycle and you only need one so you get lots of extras that's what we want to do we want to break down the bees into liquid dna and then we use that liquid dna to uh you know mutate and change the traits of certain bees so it's the very first and most important machine like i said you're going to want to analyze your bees so what i'm thinking is i need to figure out two things one i want to automate the bees when they come out of here i want all the bees that come down this line instead of just going into a chest and getting stored like they are now I want them to be automatically analyzed in the block like this the analyzer and I want them to automatically um, you know get uh, sequenced in the gene pool and turned into liquid DNA and then I need to store that liquid DNA somewhere so I haven't exactly figured out where I want to place my storage tank um, so let's think this through for just a few minutes so there's there's a couple things we really need to do here to automate this whole system number one uh, I need to start automatically um, turning my honey into liquid honey so we've got plenty of honey drops in here at this point we can mess with this system of uh, pipes just a little bit and start saying anytime you get honey instead of just throwing it in the chest I want to automatically squeeze it and store it somewhere and then I want to uh, you know use it in the analyzer to analyze any of the bees that come through and it's going to be a whole automation and crazy sequence so why don't I think up a plan and then come back with a plan and talk it over with you guys and we'll see how we wake out all right, guys, so I've decided that uh, this honey uh, that I want to produce is going to be used in many different areas. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is 
come over here and set up a uh, shared resource for honey. So real quick and easy, you guys have seen me build like a dozen of these at this point. So uh, I'll just have like a big uh, shared, uh, you know, liquid honey area. And by shared, I don't mean I'm sharing it with other people on the server. Uh, by shared, I mean it's going to be shared amongst all the different, um, you know, machines and buildings that need it. So a couple people were like, Dara's calling it a shared liquids room. Well, like, yeah, I'm sharing it you know, for different areas on my single player world is probably the best way to put it. Uh, I'm actually going to put the valve on this guy on the bottom, and then I'm going to also have um, a valve on the side for outputting. So let's see here. We've got these guys hooked up, and uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and put this and that. Cool. And we should have an iron tank ready for honey. Uh, I'm going to uh, get the liquid tesseract set up underneath here. So if we dig down, uh, all I have to do is put the liquid tesseract right there. And uh, let's see, I'm going to set this device frequency to... I really not have any other frequencies here? Did they get wiped? Oh, I think my liquid, uh, maybe on the update from, uh, you know, one mod version to the next, the uh, tesseract frequencies got erased. I'm going to go ahead and say that that probably happened. Okay. So I gotta sort that out. I will come back in a minute once I fix that. All right, got that all straightened out. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is pick up this crescent, uh, use the crescent hammer here to pick up this energy tesseract or liquid tesseract from the fuel tank. And I'm just gonna replace it uh, over here um, with the biofuel. So basically what I wanna do is transfer from a fuel-based uh, boiler system to biofuel while I'm here, you know, not like that's what I'm working on or anything at the moment, but just wanted to swap this because I haven't swapped it uh, just yet. So let's do that. And we're going to set this frequency to two. Uh, we're going to say send only, and we're going to call this um, biofuel. Cool. Now to switch uh, the, uh, the, the high pressure boiler that I have here from fuel to biofuel is actually really easy. All I got to do is go downstairs here and toggle this guy from one um, to uh, two. Cool. Now he's going to start receiving biofuel instead of fuel. And uh, what's going to happen is eventually this uh, steam boiler will use up some of the fuel it's already got. Um, it's going to drain out of the pipe, and it just happened there. Now, what will happen at this point is the steam boiler won't accept the biofuel until it's completely out of fuel. So this won't actually do anything until this thing completely runs out. But once it does, it'll start putting biofuel in there, and we've just switched that. So I kind of want to keep an eye on that and see if my uh, biofuel production and the number of saplings I have will be able to keep up with my steam boiler output. But anyway, back to this. So I've got frequency 3 of honey, and I'm actually going to call this honey in. Okay, uh, so let's do that. And then I'm going to have a separate frequency, uh, frequency 4 for honey out. So we're going to do that, and we're going to send only, and we're going to call this honey out. Okay, um, so that should be cool. There we go. But uh, obviously we don't have any in there yet, so let's take care of that now. So now let's get this whole thing going. Uh, should be relatively easy. I've already got a squeezer set up down here, uh, which uh, pumps all the uh, liquid honey over to this analyzer, just to analyze for my uh, automated system with the whole, you know, cool, crazy stuff. So what I want to do instead is, we're going to have to do a couple things here to tweak this, but, um, let's see, maybe I'll just put this tesseract right here. And I'll set this frequency to honey in. So this is going to send only honey, um, you know, down the honey in path. And let's see how that goes. So what I should see is grab a stack of honey drops, throw them in our squeezer, and then all the honey will get sent down to the liquid tesseract and send its way straight over to here at some point. That's what I expect to happen. Maybe I goofed up on something. What do we got? Honey in. Oh, there should be receive only. Aha. Figured I messed something up. Hey, look, we're getting honey. Nice. There we go. So honey is, uh, you know, making its way over to here. Now, of course, it's going to fill up this pipe before it fills up in here. And, you know, there we go.
All right, good. So now we have a surplus of honey coming in to the liquids room, and uh, we're going to use that honey for quite a few things. Uh, but first of all, I think I want to get myself another analyzer and set it up over here. Uh, the other thing I want to do is set up um, probably a hopper on top of the squeezer here, and I need to figure out exactly how to uh, run this so that it runs properly. We're going to have to dig back into the wall here, so let's see. See, that pipe being there is a nuisance to me. This is going to be a little tight, but I think we can manage. Let's see what we can what we can do. All right, guys, let's build it. So uh, we need to adjust this system to make it so that uh, items come up here, and uh, pretty much everything's still going to come up the straight line, um, except for, let's see... Right now we have royal jelly and pollen going down this way. So what should happen here is the following. When we squeeze or centrifuge things, we should get honey drops out of it, right? Uh, so what we want to do is then pull the items out. And I'm thinking it should go something like this. So all items should be pulled out of the centrifuge, right? Yeah. Hmm, gets tricky. So what I'm thinking what we're going to do is uh, send the, uh, we're already sending Silky Propolis back to get recentrifuged. We're now going to send Honey Drops back to go into uh, the squeezer here. So how are we going to do this? Pretty straightforward, I think. We're actually going to move uh, the current setup. So let's turn this thing off for the moment. Energy Pulsar off. And uh, yeah, this guy should be off now. Let's set it up like this. I'm going to move everything to behind the wall instead of being in front of it. We're going to put the diamond pipe here, and we're going to uh, put a gold pipe here. There we go. And we want to mimic this, so we're going to have cobble be blue. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do this. This is one of those tricky setups. So yeah, cobble will be blue. And then we had uh, propolis and, uh, or no, we had uh, pollen and royal jelly going down the black line. And everything else goes up the white path, right? And to here, we're going to run like so. Yeah, that's going to get tricky real quick. Let's do this. Better sleep through the night before a creeper sneaks up on me and destroys all my hard work. All right, guys, this is actually easier than I was making it. Uh, all I have to do really here is just set up a diamond pipe on top and then continue it along. So I've actually just uh, re-moved this thing around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say honey drops go green and yellow can be cobble. That just basically closes it off, so nothing can go the yellow path. Um, the green path honey will go down, and everything else will go down the black path. So basically, if uh, you know honey comes up here, um, it should work out pretty well. All I gotta do now is tell this thing to send honey down the yellow path as well. So once honey drops get pulled out of the centrifuge, they're gonna go down here, they're gonna come down the yellow path instead of going over to the chest. Uh, they're gonna come up here and hit this pipe, and they're gonna choose the white path because it's the only path that's available to them. And then when they get up to this diamond pipe, they're going to choose the green path. And boom, it should work. You ready to try it? Let's see what happens when we turn on our energy gate. Cool? So it should start pumping items out, and we should start seeing honey and stuff fly up this path in just a moment. Go. There it goes. Nice. And it's squeezing. Only other thing left to do is uh, deal with this propolis. It's uh, a low chance, but it still happens, and we don't want the machine to clog up with propolis. So that's why I brought some Artarchic gates and uh, wanted to get this thing going. Real simple. Just going to pump it directly into this chest. Uh, put the Artarchic gate here and just say, you know, redstone signal off, energy pulse, and it should pull the propolis out. Nice and quick, too. 
awesome. All right, so that is a complete build. So I'm just going to turn on all these energies uh, pulsers again because I had turned them off for the time being. Um, yeah, now we should be in good shape. Cool. All right, now for the liquid DNA part. I'm thinking maybe I could just build the tank right here. Now, I don't really need liquid DNA anywhere uh, except this room. So there's no sense in setting it up with a tesseract and putting it over in my shared uh, liquids room there where uh, you know I'm sharing the liquids with all the machine rooms and stuff because it's really only here that it needs it. So I can just you know pump it out of the gene pool here, pump it into a uh, iron tank right here, and then uh, you know pump it from the iron tank directly into uh, all the other stuff. So that's kind of what I think I'd like to do. So let's set that up. Uh, shouldn't be too bad. Just need to uh, set this guy up like so. Cool. Clear out a little bit of this tree that might be in my way. And yeah, I know, using a drill to clear leaves. What do you want from me? How does this look for a liquid DNA tank? I think this should be plenty big, because liquid DNA, you really get a very, very small amount uh, from all your different bees and stuff. So I'm gonna put again the valve on the bottom here, and I'm also gonna have a valve on this side. And that way, what I can do is set it up like this. You ready? I'm gonna get some liquid ducts. Should have probably kept this in my inventory because I need to connect this machine here. Probably going to move this acclimatizer or maybe even completely get rid of it. We'll see. But for now, I'm just going to uh, leave this guy here. And we're going to run this line straight over to here. Cool. Get the uh, wrench. And we can do this. Kind of like that you can put levers upside down now. That's pretty cool. Boom. There we go. Liquid DNA drains out and into the iron tank. We've got a very small amount. You can see that the bees that we processed gave us about 0.15 buckets. So really small amount. But of course that was only two bees and I have plenty of them at this point ready to be, uh, you know, chewed up and spit out. Wow. So we've got a nice iron tank full of liquid DNA uh, ready to get stored here. And then we can run from the center block there, we can output into all the machines. So this basically acts as a buffer to store extra liquid DNA. Now all I really need to do is get an analyzer here. And what I'd like to set up is uh, basically um, analyze the B and then pump it out of the analyzer and into the gene pool. All right, so just to make this quick, I'm going to use this analyzer right here uh, to do my dirty work. So I'm going to place it right here, let's say. And then to that, I'm going to connect a wooden pipe and make sure to wrench it so that it's uh, facing the right direction. Then I'm going to set this guy up to just basically say, uh, you know, when there are uh, items in the inventory, emit the energy pulser. We're on the new version of Buildcraft now, so the uh, Autarkic gates are already running at max speed, which is when you saw this thing turn on earlier, it instantly pulled out all the propolis really fast. That's because it's running at max speed now, which is cool. Uh, so we've got that going. Analyzer's gonna need honey, of course. Uh, so let's get some uh, honey going via Tesseract power. Just going to set this guy up right along the back. And we can put him right here and we'll just say uh, honey out which uh, is outputting from the liquids room and we're gonna say receive only check and now we should start filling up with honey oh that's cool all right so we've got honey going all right uh, and it looks really cool with the tesseract right behind an analyzer like that doesn't it I like it all right so obviously not a huge amount of honey was in there but it's enough to get us going with the analyzer right so let's go just double check that we don't have some kind of weird problem i'm guessing this tank is empty no problemo uh we are going to put an analyzer back here by the way so i will um you know leave this the way it is for now uh what i could do if i really wanted to speed things up is just grab a couple stacks of honey and uh throw it all straight into the squeezer no problem and we're probably also going to want uh, another hopper. So let's go make one of those real fast. Because um, the bees not stacking and everything, it's probably a good idea to hopper those guys instead of um, putting them directly in the analyzer. Even though the analyzer has a bit of an internal buffer already, putting a hopper in there is just going to make things a little bit more safe. 
Because, uh, you know, the last thing we want to do is have bees falling on the ground. They make such a small amount of liquid DNA as it is, we don't really want to waste any. So again, what we're doing here is doing the most efficient way of creating liquid DNA, which we can use with our Extra Bees Advanced Machines. Uh, we're trying to analyze them first so that uh, the uh, bees can, you know, quickly uh, be turned into uh, liquid DNA. And by analyzing them first, it doubles the amount of liquid DNA we get per drone. So let's uh, give this a quick try. All I'm going to do is uh, grab a handful of bees. Like I'm going to grab half a stack of these forest bees. All right. All I have to do is throw them into the hopper here. The hopper should instantly send them down. They're going to get analyzed. Once they're analyzed, they'll get pulled out by the autarkic gate and sent into the gene pool, which has already got enough power. Uh, the gene pool will then turn it into liquid DNA, which will get pumped out the back of the gene pool and sent right into the iron tank. And then in a future episode, when I start working with the extra bees machines, I'll go ahead and uh, pull them down and uh, pull the liquid DNA into them. So right now, basically setting up some liquid DNA automation. Uh, we should be getting close to the point where we've analyzed that bee. It's now in the gene pool. You can see that. So it got pulled through. And this guy is then going to do the same thing. Now the analyzer, I believe, is slower than the gene pool. You can see the gene pool has finished and drained its liquid into there. And we've got another, uh, you know, one-tenth of a bucket. So not bad. Not bad at all, really. Really. And I don't like us having 0.5 buckets, so let's find a non-analyzed drone like you. I'm just going to gene pool him right up. So the gene pool itself has a nice little internal buffer, so if this thing does, you know, for whatever reason, send more than it can handle, it'll uh, go in here. But if it sends too many, it'll start popping out because, uh, you know, the wooden pipe won't know what to do. It'll just drop the items on the ground. But analyzer, slower than the gene pool. Uh, we It's almost like half as slow, you can see, because we haven't gotten that extra B yet. So there we go. Nice. Now we're up to uh, point, you know, four buckets. So we're almost at a bucket of liquid DNA. Awesome. So now we uh, all we got to do at this point, really, is uh, I'm going to clear out the backlog of bees that I have right in here. I'm just going to empty all this junk out, send it up here, and once that's all cleaned up, instead of having all the extra bees land in this chest, I'm just going to reroute the uh, piping system and just go straight under the ground and then land over here, um, you know, right inside this hopper. Probably run it around the back of that building or something like that so that we can get uh, all the bees that get automatically produced from our apiaries directly into the hopper. So cool. All right, then we can start looking at the uh, extra bee stuff, which we might do in a future episode. We'll see. Real quick, before we wrap up here, looks like we've got a little bit of mutation going on on the trees. Cross your fingers for me, guys, because I really am tired of waiting. I want these chestnuts. Did I get one? I think I got one. Nice, common walnut sapling. Awesome. So that's the third walnut sapling that I've gotten. I'm going to go immediately throw it in my chest and celebrate. Uh, yep, that's cool. Had a portal there, ran right through it. All right, so common walnut sapling. Nice, so that's one, two, three common walnut saplings. Got to find another one. So going to keep an eye on these trees. Still, that's all. Oh, there's one. That, unfortunately, is a broken grafter. Let's get... I had a couple extra grafters that I was storing here, and, you know. Nice! Did I finally get it? Awesome! All right. I was going to wrap up, but now I want to build a walnut tree. Wahaha! Uh, the nice thing about this is now that I have four common walnut saplings, I'm going to go ahead and get that and a little bit of this stuff. This is really good for us, guys, because now we can make a lot more seed oil. Seed oil being extremely rare from seeds anymore, but walnut saplings are the way to go for them. Let's plant this somewhere cool. Uh, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe like right back here. This looks like a nice spot. Now, this is not going to be, well, it'll probably be the final spot for this walnut sapling, but uh, the good thing about this is it's going to give us, obviously, many more walnut saplings, and then we can, uh, you know, make a farm with these. So that's maybe what we'll work on next episode. I'll introduce you guys to the new multi-block farm system of forestry, and we can start handling that stuff. So you can see I'm planting down all these saplings right here. Because the walnut sapling we learned in a prior episode using the treealizer. Let's actually snag this guy back and get the treealizer just to demonstrate to you guys. 
because this guy is a two by two um, tree, you can see right here, girth, two by two, uh, we need to plant the walnut saplings in a two by two pattern like this, and then grow them using bone meal. Now, which sapling you right click on with bone meal is usually a little random, but there we go. Nice. So we've got this awesome walnut tree. Cool. Uh, we can get more saplings, of course, by using grafters. So we're able to, you know, real quickly, I'm going to sneak up to the top here. That's just such an awesome tree. Uh, use the grafter here to get more common walnut saplings, which is, you know, uber. Nice. So obviously need to get myself some more grafters. These guys have run out. And remember I told you that the last use of the grafter will not grant you, um, you know, anything. So let's get one more piece of bronze. And that'll get us the grafters we need so we can get, you know, four more of these. And that will be awesome. So that's all I want to do is get four more of these things real quick. Hmm. Right? Yeah, that should be cool. And then we got to wrap up, guys, because we're getting, you know, to that point. Hooray! Four common walnut saplings. So now, the way this tree works is actually a little different from what we've seen in the past so far. You don't have to break the leaves on the walnut tree in order for them to drop walnuts. All you got to do is sit around and wait. And what's going to happen is the um, uh, walnuts will slowly drop uh, occasionally just out of the leaves and fall on the ground. That's it. Like, they'll just land there on the ground. Now, I could set up a wooden golem. Maybe I might even want to set up a wooden golem to collect them for now. Uh, I've only got the straw in there. How's this guy doing, by the way? We have a lot of stuff in here. All right. For now, I want to set up the wooden golem to do this. So I'm going to get this guy. Come here, buddy. Thank you. And I'm just going to leave this here just to kind of prove both to you guys and to myself that I'm right about this. Uh, pretty sure I'm right here, but, you know, I've never actually, you know, done this before. So it's kind of new. So I'm just going to put, like, a chest right, you know, here. Put the wooden golem on it. And over time, the uh, walnuts will mature and they'll just fall to the ground. And the wooden golem should go pick them up and put them in the chest. You know, just like it would with anything else. Like cobble, for example. He'll be like, oh yeah, sure, I'll take care of that, buddy. Thanks. You're the best wooden golem. All right, so with that, I'm sorry to say, but we definitely hit a wrapping up point. Really happy that we got the walnut saplings now because uh, it, it's going to give us a really good source of seed oil. Like I said, next episode, we don't need to use golems for this. Forestry does give us a way to automate ourselves, and we're probably going to take advantage of that. I'm going to build a uh, multi-block forestry farm, which basically allows us to, uh, you know, harvest these things in, uh, in, even better. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. So, uh, Darwolf20 signing off on episode 42. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, take it easy.